Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In this one, we're gonna be learning how to test React. Imagine that you have a simple add function which adds two numbers and returns back a result. To test this function, we would create another test function where when we call two and three as arguments, we would expect to return back five, which would make our test running successfully. But what if we change the logic of our add function and it subtracts instead of adding the values? And now when we call our function with 2 and 3 it would return minus 1 and we would expect it to be 5, which would make our test running fail. And now when you understand the basic concept of testing, let's see how we can test React components. Go with Sloba. There are multiple ways to test your React applications, but today I'm going to show you how you can test your application using the Jest Test Runner. Here I have created a brand new React project, and the only thing which I have added is this item list component. And this is the component I want to test in this tutorial. All this component does, it, it receives this items array, and inside of this component we are looping through the items array and we are generating the item name, or actually rendering, and we are assigning the item ID to the key. And that's all it does. So now, let's first see how we can add Jest to regular React application. So let's open up the terminal. First, we need to install some packages. Let's type npm install. And to save these packages, let's add dash dash save dev. And the first one is Jest. Then we want to install Babel-Jest. And Babel is just JavaScript compiler that Jest uses. So let's install a preset from Babel. So type in at babel for slash preset dash env. This is for environment. And we need another preset. So babel for slash preset dash react. And at the end, we want to install react-test-renderer. So this is the package that Jest uses for testing React application specifically. And let's press enter to install. Let's wait for a couple of seconds. It should be very fast. And there you go. It added 513 packages. Now we can add a configuration file for the Babel. So let me close the terminal. So to configure Babel, let's create a new file. And let's name this file babel.config.json. So this is the exact naming convention that you need to follow, otherwise it won't work. And here we need to include those presets that we installed. So let's type in presets. And the first one which we installed was add babel for slash preset-environment and for the second one let's add an array and the second preset was add babel for slash preset-react and for this one we want to set a runtime to be automatic now save this file and now we need to add one command to the package.json file so that you can run our tests. So here in our package.json file inside of the scripts let's add a new file or actually a new command and this one should be test and we will just be running the jest so this is the simple command that we're adding. So let's save the package.json file and let's close it and let's create a new testing file for this item list component. So let's add this file and let's name it item list.test.js and this is the naming convention that you always need to follow name of the file dot test dot js inside of this component first let's import react then let's import test renderer from react test renderer and let's import the component which we want to test. So import item list from item list. 
There are a couple of things that I want to test out of this component. The first thing that I want to test if this component is getting rendered correctly. The second thing that I want to test if this component renders the exact number of items that we passed in. And the last thing that I want to test if this item is rendering the correct names that we are passing to the items array. So we're going to have three tests. And all of these tests are for this item list component and we can group them. So Jest provides us with a simple way to group our tests and that's using the describe function. So the first argument is the name of this group and we're just gonna call it like our item list component. And the second is the function where we execute our tests. First, let's create a dummy array of list items. So let's create a new constant and let's name this array as item. And this is going to be a dummy array. So let's create an object. And first we need to create an ID. And the second one, we need to add a name. So let's name this one as item one. And let's just copy paste this two times and just update the, to be item two and ID item two and ID three and item three, like so. Now let's first test if this component gets rendered correctly. So the function that we need to use is named it. And this function receives two arguments. First is the name how we want to name our test. And the second is again callback function that we want to execute. And my assumption is that we are naming here as individual tests. You can also use the test function as well. But it is shorter and it works exactly the same. And let's name our first test as renders correctly. And for the naming convention of your tests, you want to say here what you're expecting to happen. So now let's render our component. And we can do that using the test renderer. So use the create method and we need to pass our item list component. So just pass in an item list component and we want to pass these items. Make sure to name them as items. And let's close the tag. And now we need to save this in a variable and let's name this variable as tree or you can call it item list component or whatever you want. And to test our component, we use the expect function. And this function tests if a certain value meets a certain condition. And first we need to convert our component to JSON. This way we can match and test if the JSON output matches the correct value. And we do that by using the function to match snapshot, like so. Now let's save this file and let's run the testing. Here we can clear the console and let's just run npm run test. And in a couple of seconds, you can see actually 0 0.6 seconds, we had one test which is passed let me just scroll a little bit down. So you can see here, we have one test suit, which is the item list. And we have one test, which is passed, and one snapshot. So we have this component being rendered correctly. Now we can write a couple more tests here. So let me copy this first testing item. And let's name this second test as renders the correct number of items. In this one, we want to test how many LI items do we have rendered. So first we need to get the element root and we access that by running the root property here. And let's save this in a constant and let's name it as a root. 
And now here in this expect function, we can call the root dot find all by type and we pass in the type as li. So this is something like you would do previously with G jQuery. And we just want to test the length of these items. And for the testing, we want to check if this equals to equal the length of these items that we are passing. Items dot length. Let's save and let's run the tests again. Let's clear the console first and let's run the tests. And as you can see, we are running one test suit. Here we have two tests and both of them are passed. Beautiful. There is also an option if you want to skip a certain test. So you just add an X in front of the name of the function here. Let's save it and let me show you again. So now if you run the tests, you see that we have one passed and one skipped, two in total. We can also skip the entire two test suits. So let's remove this X here. And in front of the describe, we just add an X to skip the entire test suit. So let's save this and let's run again. And as you can see, we have one test suit and we skipped it. So it skipped all the tests inside of this test suit. Okay. The purpose of this skipping is sometimes you have a function or a component that is not complete and maybe it's in development mode. So you want to skip it so that you have uh, testing this, some particular tests. Also, sometimes you don't want an entire application to be tested because your application may grow into size and you want to test only a specific number of test suits. So let's add the third and final test here. And for the last one, we want to test if these names are being rendered correctly inside of this item list component. So let's name this third test as renders the correct item names. So what we want to do here is we want to access all the nodes inside of the list. So let me copy this and let's save all the list items inside of new variable and let's name it li nodes like so. And now let's loop through these items. So li nodes dot for each. And inside of this function, we get a node and we get an index like so. And here we're gonna test. So let's move this expect function. And here we want to test if node dot children, which essentially just takes the text out of the node. And we want to check if this equal to the item that is in the current iteration and to check its name. So use to equal, and then we want to access the items and the current item, and we want to access the name. And one thing you need to be aware of is the return type or format of this property. So it will return a string inside of our array format, so like this. So that means that we need to surround our name inside of an array, like so, so that these two strings or values are equal. Perfect. Now let's test our last test case and let's run tests. And for the first time, we have failed tests. You see that we have root is not defined and you are getting this red arrow pointing to the arrow spot. So here we're using the root, but we haven't defined it. So like on the previous test, let's add a root and we access the root from tree. And now let's save and let's run. Hopefully you will have smaller one amount of errors inside of your tests. So let's run the tests. And now we have all three tests passed in. 
And that's how easily you can test your components using the Just testing framework. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.